It says in Luke, no man when he has lighted a candle covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed but gets it up on a candlestick that they which enter in may see the light. Matthew chapter 5 puts it this way, that you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under the bushel, but on the stand, and it shines unto all that are in the house. Even so, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. If you look at the world today, and all the problems that exist around the globe, it appears that there's not many lighting candles anywhere. The world is in darkness. And the question is, why? Why do we not light the candle as God has asked us to do? One reason is that we're probably afraid to be obedient. Because if we do this, it may mean that we have to do things or go places that we're not used to going or doing. Abraham was asked by God to leave the city of Ur and go into a country that he did not know, to do something he did not know, to people he did not know, but he went. The fishermen were asked by Jesus to follow him, and they went. If they had asked to consult with their lawyer, their travel agent, their financial planner, we'd probably still be waiting for them to leave the ship, <laughs> but they went. Many people are afraid to light a candle because of what it may entail. And the other reason may be because of social pressures, because when someone goes to do something these days, there's all sorts of influences that tend to counteract it. Reverend Paul Brown, in 1975, put this in Faith for Today. It's a story about a Christian who lived at the fork of a road. The fork either turned right where there was a good secure highway or went left into a dark woods where many people got lost. And he thought it might be nice if he could light a candle in the corner of his house to illuminate the intersection so that more people could find the right way. So he went to the villagers and asked them their opinion. They thought this would be a great idea, except they weren't sure that he was actually qualified to light a candle. <laughs> so he went away to take a basic course and then to become a master of candle lighting technology. <laughs> After seven years of study, he came to three conclusions. First of all, that there was a great variety of candles of different sizes and shapes available, and that there were a great number of techniques to be used in to light candles. But he also became aware that not one time during the course of his seven years of study did one of his teachers light a candle. <laughs> Nor was he given the opportunity to light a candle as a student. Anyway, he got his degrees, and after all the pomp and ceremony of getting a degree was over, he came back to the village to light a candle in his house to light the way for people at the intersection. But then the villagers caused some more problems. They figured that now that he had a degree, someone would have to pay him. So there'd have to be some arrangements made for payment 
and also some arrangements made to organize the candle lighting. And as well, they thought it would be nice to fix up his house so that more people would be attracted to the place and therefore see the candle. In addition, some people felt that the old type of straight candles were too old fashioned to be used. We needed more modern candles that be more fitting with the time that they were in. And some people also thought that since the Asian people were so used to lighting candles that some Asian influence should be there brought into the, brought into the idea as well. One thing that most people agreed to apparently was that the candle should only be lit for one hour, one day a week. That was all that was needed. Then furthermore, people came that travelers should not be influenced by people. That perhaps they should just set up a carrot stand so that people could buy carrots and improve their night vision and therefore that they would not be under the influence of anybody because that might interfere with their self-rights and their privacy if they were influenced by a candle in the window. Mm -hmm. The result being that the candle maker was by now, or the candle lighter was by now so confused that he just left. And the intersection stayed in darkness. This is sort of a long story, but you can see that the influences that happen in the world and what they were, what they were important 30 years ago or 50 years ago are still as important today or more so. The Bible says it very simply. Light a candle and let your light shine before men. It's the only way that the intersections of life will be lighted enough that people can make the right decisions, go down the right roads, and avoid the darkness and despair that the world suffers from. Light a candle and show it something to think about.